All right, guys, so uh, my name's Deep Dada, and I run a program called the Code Alliance. And my program is actually run under a parent nonprofit called Benetech. Um, I could spend days talking to you about how amazing Benetech is, just to give you really basic um, overview. Benetech has been around since 1989, and they are one of the largest organizations that builds software for people with visual impairments. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're blind or it's, it's difficult for you to read off a screen, Benetech reads text-to-speech readers, we have 3D printing capabilities, and Braille, um, and Benetech has been so successful in this endeavor that they've been able to branch out into other Tech for Good programs, so I run the Code Alliance program under Benetech. And Code Alliance, as you can see on the screen, is a program where we connect um, Mostly tech professionals, sort of geared towards web developers, product managers, UX designers, to social impact organizations to get good code done for good. Oh yeah, and uh, I have a superpower today called Ricky, so when I, when I <laughs> click my mouse, the, the slides change. <laughs> okay, so how does Code Alliance work? So I work with three communities. Um, and managing, the, uh, managing these three stakeholders is quite a challenge, but the three communities I work with are nonprofits and other social impact orgs. I work with big tech companies like Google and Yahoo and Sandisk, um, and I work with individuals. Now, my program um, originally, it's been around for about three years, and originally it was called Social Coding for Good. Um, and I thought the name was too obvious, so I changed it for many reasons. <laughs> um, one of the things that we're doing now is we're, we're shifting a little bit away from the individual developers. We still use um, individual developers for volunteer opportunities, but we found that there's other avenues for them to volunteer, and we're trying to build a more um, high-touch program connecting the tech companies to the nonprofits. <laughs> All right, so. Most tech nonprofits, as you know, have a small team of engineers, and unlike a for-profit company, tech nonprofits can't scale their engineering team quite the same way. You know, you guys, we have like grant money that's earmarked for tech, and you can't just go out and hire ten more engineers when you need them. Um, I wish, I wish we could. So, you know, what? Benetech realized is there's all these developers out there in the community that want to do good. There's um, the open source community that regularly contributes to software. There's a lot of people around the Bay Area that work at big companies that have some time um, that they want to volunteer, they want to give back. And so what the original idea with Social Coding for Good is, let's connect the nonprofits and the developers up. And that way everybody wins and we get a bunch of good tech out of it. What we've found in practice though is that there's actually a lot of challenges um, connecting you know, developers, individual developers to these nonprofits. And some of the challenges have to do with setting expectations, um, the nonprofits having to take core engineering time away from their you know, engineers to onboard the developers. And so a big shift that Code Alliance is making is we actually want to build the infrastructure that serves sort of as that middleman, as the developer. We're calling it like a developer zone. We're building a developer zone that's going to help nonprofits and individual developers as well as volunteers from tech companies uh, <coughs> connect in a more streamlined fashion. Um, and to do that, we have to understand what are the needs of the nonprofits and how do we take those needs and put them into like little boxes that I can hand to a volunteer and have the volunteer basically create some sort of technical miracle with very little context and very little onboarding time. So I'm quickly going to go through some of the tech, some of the nonprofits that we've worked with in the past and give you like a profile of, of you know who we work with now. Okay, so one of the very first nonprofits that Social Coding for Good helped was this organization called Medic Mobile. And I'm going to go through these really fast, but Medic Mobile um, was our partner like three years ago, and now they're doing extremely well. Um, this, this nonprofit basically does electronic health uh, records, and they branch out to a lot of like digital health care. Um, 
and they are right now working in about 20 countries and are used by, I think, 9,000 professionals. And so way back in the day, Social Coding for Good was one of the first sort of organizations that helped Medic Mobile get some of their initial technology built through these tech volunteers and opportunities. All right, um, the next one I want to highlight really quick is the Avena Foundation, which is a foundation in Latin America, um, wanted a way to track the, uh, in, in parts of Latin America, they have these like community um, water sources that anybody from the community can come and gather water. And there's hundreds of them. Um, and they wanted a way to track the, to give individuals a way to find these community like water centers. And so the Avena Foundation partnered with Social Coding for Good um, to build kind of like a mobile app that lets people locate these water centers. And one of the partners that we worked with on this project was Google. So just give me an example. We, we made this connection happen with Avena Foundation, with Google, and we got a really great app built that's actually being used by the, uh, the port, oh, oh, sorry, Panama, the government of Panama as well as USAID. All right, so Mifos. Mifos is one of my favorite partners. Um, Mifos has been around since 2006. They were started by the Grameen Foundation, and now they've spun off into their own, um, own organization. Mifos has an open source platform for financial inclusion. So they do a lot of the same stuff that like PayPal does, but they do it for free. And they do it for people in developing countries. Um, Mifos, their platform is used by I think 1.5 million people. Um, and all the, the amazing thing about Mifos is all the tech that they get done is done open source. So they have individual volunteers help them build this platform and manage it. Okay, all right. So Cone Alliance is now moving into a space where we wanna be more of like a consultancy to nonprofits. We wanna help you understand how to be like these organizations I just talked about, especially Mifos. So we wanna help you build a developer zone that makes it easy for you to access all the free sort of volunteer help that's out there in the open source community. All right, um, one way I do this is I actually work with tech companies and I provide their CSR departments, their corporate social responsibility departments, kind of like a, like a volunteerism as a service. So um, I create really small eight hour to 40 hour engagement opportunities and I serve them up and basically what looks like a menu um, to these tech companies and then they have their engineering teams participate in like a weekend hackathon or like a one week volunteer thing. Okay. So my whole thing is like we have so many hackathons today but like to what end? Where, where is all this work going? Um, Code Alliance is trying to take the hackathon model and evolve it and I'm gonna fly through these slides but basically I'm trying to create consistent um, commitments from these tech companies to create what I'm calling an ongoing hackathon. So just really quickly, this is an example of what we show the tech companies. We connect volunteers to open source projects for social good. We, we build relationships with nonprofits. Um, we, we source projects, like uh, we break them into manageable opportunities. Quick. Um, and then we get teams to work on these projects week to week. Um, this is an example of a project summary that I serve to the tech company so that their, um, their sort of engineering managers can see what type of opportunities that they're signing up for. All right, um, one other thing I want to mention really quick is we do custom events. Click. Uh, we're doing a really great event on May 7th, the day of service. We're bringing 35 nonprofits to San Jose for this like one day day of service. There's going to be 400 volunteers there. We're really excited about this. Um, and we work again with small with um, a community of open source developers on certain projects. All right. So mentioning the ongoing hackathon, uh, what I'm trying to do is I've created four standard engagement models: an eight-hour code sprint, a 16-hour hackathon, 25-hour meetup style event, and a 40-hour meetup style event. And I'm basically slotting these events in quarter by quarter and getting corporate partners to commit. And my whole thing is um, basically being able to take a nonprofit and cycle them through multiple events to create their code work done in a way that's committed and ongoing. Um, so that's my program. If you guys, you all work at a nonprofit, if you have questions about how to get involved, please get in touch with me. We are looking for some projects for Google's next events. 
And uh, we are trying to build a uh, code alliance. So thank you. Yes. Um, <laughs> I will write my email. You can you can ping me on Twitter. Actually, I'll write my email up here, or just come talk to me. I'll, I'll write it there if they allow me to. Deep D at Benetech dot org. D E E P and then letter D. It's okay. Starbucks spells it wrong all the time. <laughs> Apparently, they think my name is Steve. And, and, and we'll we'll send uh, we'll send out links after after this as well. Also, I want to mention quickly the apps for change demo hashtag. So if you guys are tweeting today, apps for change demo. Another question back there. What are the uh, main problems you have with uh, scoping projects for nonprofits? Um, the main projects, actually, sorry, the main problem we have is that my first touch contact at these nonprofits usually isn't technical. And I, you know, when I present these projects to our corporate partner partners, they ask for very specific information. It's not always enough just to say, you know, we have a, an Angular app. Like, we need to know very specifically what problem we're going to be solving in an eight-hour or 40-hour period. So the sooner I can get to somebody that is very, like, hands-on with the tech at the nonprofit, the better I can create that engagement. Other question over there? Already completely well defined problems. Have, have the start have the uh, not products you work at done all their user research? Do they have product designers? And also, what happens once your once your hackathon people disappear? How yeah. how can that code be maintained when there's a problem? Right. Um, one thing that I should mention is we work with nonprofits that are pretty mature with their technology. We have three requirements with our nonprofit partners. One is that they have at least one engineer on staff to support the tech. Two is that the project that they bring to us is open source. We don't work on proprietary technology. And three is that the technology is actually already being used in the community. Um, we have worked on some like sort of fresh from scratch ideation projects, but for the, for the most part, we help tech projects that have already shown some sustainability. The problem of you know what happens after the hackathon is the main problem, and that's that's where I'm trying to I'm trying to solve that problem with this ongoing hackathon model. Um, and I don't I don't have a great answer for you at this time. Uh, one